morning everybody so let's start off with the south african market the south african top 40 the aussie and um, as usual we start with a weekly and let's get our our trend lines in and i just want to find okay there it is there so this breakout here is currently where we are testing so you can see how strong this area is there we have a tail onto it there and then we have one, two, three weeks where the tail has touched the top. Okay. Uh, and still, from a weekly perspective, you can still see we essentially going sideways. And let's get down to the daily. So this level of support uh, resistance held yesterday. And you can see how... Uh, Tikkinson and uh, Kijunson. So Tikkinson's down here and Kijunson the red line. See how they're going flat, they're horizontal, as is the cloud. You can see how that line is flattening out and this line is flattening out. Um, that indicates a, a range. Um, sort of momentum is slowing down and basically we're going to do this kind of thing. Okay. And um, this diversion here is still not there, this one here. So from the high of this bar, down, and from there, up. Okay, so ideally you want the OBV moving in the same direction as what price is, and currently that's heading to the upside. So this could be a continuation. So if we do break below this bar here, then obviously the continuation will be enforced, but this could carry on for forever. I mean, you know, we could continue trending up all the way past here, um, which would then eliminate this diversion that's in play at the moment. So it's really just a signal that I utilize at a level, and we are at a level, which is why I'm paying attention to it. Um, apart from that, there's nothing else in the daily that's giving us a direction. Uh, we've got all these tails at the top. And what I want to do is just um, mark the tails, okay? So let's just put a box in around them like that. And that's sort of the zone where we're turning. So as we drill down to lower time frames, we'll see, uh, hopefully see what's going on. Okay, so looking at the four hour, you can see how uh, Tikkun uh, Sen is pointing to the upside. Kijun Sen is definitely pointing to the upside. Now, Tikkun Sen is the, um, the faster moving average, and Kijun Sen is the slow moving average. So, Tikkun Sen is the, the short term directional momentum, and uh, Kijun Sen is the long term. Okay, so you can see that Siku Span, the brown line, has broken through price, it's broken through Kijunson and Tikkunson, and it is now resting at the cloud. So most of the time when you break through the cloud like this, you typically have a, a pullback of some sort, and uh, it'll either come back to Tikkunson or Kijunson or the cloud. Now, in the case of the Aussie right now, that is 600 points odd buffer or zone where it can turn. So you can see how this area is respected. We could actually extend this um, rectangle to here, and you'll see how the exact same rectangle is extended. So this area here is obviously an area of interest for somebody who's selling, okay? And I say somebody because the volumes on the South African market are low. So typically it it just takes one big player who can move the direction of the market. And uh, in our case, it'll be Nasper. So, anyway, so we had a, a great green bar to the top, um, but then we had a rejection bar straight after that. So this could be seen as a um, exhaustion bar. But one thing that has not happened yet. Well, I suppose it probably has. Sorry, wrong one. I just want to use the Fibonacci extension to 
No, we haven't. So according to Fibonacci extension, a break above here will give us this area as a target. Okay. Um, but for me, we, we kind of in the zone where it is battling to get through. And as I said yesterday, it's going to need something. Uh, it's going to need something big to happen to drive the price through. Okay, so looking at the hour, when was this? Okay, so you can see how we opened up with an engulfing bar at 9 o'clock. So, okay, this first bar is slightly, it's the 8.30 to, to 9 o'clock bar, but because I'm on um, IG as a broker, uh, they do a 24-hour market, so this includes from 8 o'clock. That's after hours market that it includes. But anyway, you can see how we had this massive engulfing green bar, and your entry would have been down here for a long and targeting this zone again, on which you can see we've created now a triple top. So there, there, and there. Oh, sorry, I've got it wrong. There's, there's Monday's bar there. So it's still a green bar and golfing bar. And um, we had a double top in play. Now we have a, another double top or triple top in play. So there's nothing, there's nothing really, uh, yeah, we need a break either way to actually figure out what's going on. But I suppose what we could say is we are forming a pretty solid channel here. So a break above this level here will definitely indicate that we are moving to the upside. Okay, um, a break below sort of a break below this area here is going to mean uh, we've got some more downside to come. And again, like I said yesterday, it's not necessary to mean that the downside is coming all the way down to this area, but you know, possibly another pullback to create, to come and challenge this pin bar here before moving to the upside, or this trend line will hold. I think the the key thing here is um, whatever happens in the first hour, and you can see, I'm going to get pretty busy on this chart now, so what I'm going to do is just, you both, a lot of you have heard, and I know a lot of you play the open range break strategy, so for me the first hour, which is from 9 till 10, is the range. And you can see how that's the range. We came back and tested the 50% of the range before breaking to the upside. Uh, we had a major support or resistance area here, which we hit and we came off. But the important part of this picture is that we've closed on top of the range. Okay. So, and if you look at, if you watch my video on the, the ranges, you'll, you'll see often what happens is we break the range to the upside, we find support at this 38.2, oh, sorry, uh, support or resistance at this 38.2 Fibonacci extension of the range. So in other words, the height of the range times 38.2%. And you can see how we found resistance here, and it coincides with this level. So this could still play out. Okay, and it often does, um, especially on the Aussie. So what will happen is, you know, we could, where are we at the moment? We 364 in the futures market. So we are sitting up at the, yeah, so we're sitting above the range height at the moment. So the range targets in the futures market after hours market has been hit already. So for all intents and purposes, we're probably looking to gap above this area. And when that does happen, that's typically a bullish sign. Okay. And I think what I'll do is I'll just put another video out on gaps, you know, how I play the gaps, because 
how I play it and how a majority of people play it is, is very different. But I use price action as a as a norm, and especially when we have a violent gap over a a major resistance area like this. Because, I mean, so basically the, the concept is quite simple. If we're gapping up above a resistance area like this, then the probability of coming to close this gap is not very high. The probability of coming to test the resistance area, uh, turn the resistance into support, is a lot higher. So that's the area that I'll focus on rather than the gap. So yeah, so I think if, if this holds, so if we if futures market stays as it is now, uh, 372, so let's just put in line here where we are. So we're roughly, roughly there at the moment. And from our close, it's a 264 pip gap gap up at the moment so can't read too much into it just yet it's still half past five in the morning so around about uh, 7 30 8 o'clock if we're still ha hovering in this area on the futures market then all probability we will we will gap up and once we've gapped up that means we would have broken this uh, resistance and then what you're looking for is a retest of this area to get in for some long-term trades um, or alternatively look to the left and find out where price is going so let's just do that quickly so you can see if we break up above this and if this level holds a support this left shoulder head right shoulder is in play okay and um, I think inside this right shoulder is a another pattern which is called a cup and ha uh, cup and handle I'll show that to you now but this is in play which basically implies that we have well, let's just use this we have a 3700 point rally I want to see if it lines up with something oh, it closes a gap a previous gap up here okay so that's that's kind of um, the scenario, the long-term scenario at the moment. So if we if we hold above this and we turn this resistance into support, then we definitely have a a good opportunity lining up. And uh, let me just show you the cup and handle. Uh, just tidy up here. Okay. So you have the cup here, and then you have the handle. Okay. A cup and handle, cup and saucer, but for me it's a cup and a handle. Okay, and it typically doesn't happen this side. It always happens with the handle on the right hand side. Okay, so all that's happening is price is moving to a level, comes back, finds resistance, tries to move back down to this level, fails, creates a higher low, and then moves back to this level. And then a break above this typically gives you, um, let's just go from there to there. So it's a thousand point, thousand one hundred point target, which brings you to the previous breakout. Well, just past the previous breakout. So it brings you to that breakout there. And there's no Brooks Gap there, is there? No. Brooks Gap is down here. But yeah, so I think moral of the story is I think we can change our tune and if this resistance turns to support at 5200 on the cash market, then we have some uh, some upside to come and then maybe what's happening is the US markets are actually going to calm down and take the earnings into consideration and we're going to ignore the, um, the war on oil again. So anyway, 
I hope that helps, guys. I'll catch up with you later. Cheers, man.